Hello and welcome to the second video in the fairly new T to the power 4 series. Um, I wrote a blog post last week saying uh, what I was planning to do. I recorded a short video and uh, quite a few of you uh, seem to have found that following the blog post and the Twitter announcement. So um, that's great. Let's see if we can get something done. Um, the subtitle that I didn't really stress all that much last week in the announcement really is compounding lots of small changes for a larger effect. I, you know, don't think I'm going to show you any groundbreaking and super deep um, things each and every time or ever. It's mostly about a sort of series of small tweaks that you can take or leave as you wish. But in the aggregate effect of combining all these small tweaks, things should be uh, coming together more uh, more nicely. Um, first focus is on the shell, um, which we'll use today because the shell really is foundational for a lot of computer work on your machine or remotely. After that, uh, a really nice way of interacting with the shell and programs using uh, Bayobu. Bayobu is a front end to Tmux. Tmux is a replacement to screen. We'll get to that. Um, I quite enjoy still Emacs, so I have a few tricks on that that was very much at the core of this idea of collecting some some, uh, some, some of these uh, episodes and tricks. And if you're really not into that editor, then just skip those. It's, it's fine. It's just that's where I have accumulated a few tricks. So I'll talk about the Emacs rather than VI or Atom or VS Code or what have you. And uh, Git, of course, is uh, uh, a super important tool these days. So I think we'll uh, have a trick or two on that. And as this all starts in the context of what I mostly do, which is working with and around R, uh, maybe we'll get to some R and R tricks, but as I said last week, uh, it's not fully fleshed out. Um, we'll, you know, see as we move along. Mostly trying to stick with one topic at a time for a few episodes, but we may be jumping back and forth a little. We'll see how it goes. Today's episode one, so we'll be doing a little bit of shell, but really not that much. We're not going all that deeply. Uh, again, a reminder of sort of why we're doing this. Um, this is. Uh, from a friend who once lived in Chicago and is now on the West Coast, and it was from him that uh, I uh, borrowed this uh, formalized and written down idea that many of us had experienced, sort of one of the nicest things of working, besides getting a paycheck, obviously, is that you can learn from your peers. And some of the nicest tricks in computing you learn not in a lecture hall or in a book, but by uh, working with experienced colleagues and looking over their shoulders. And, you know, given that in this day and age of uh, the virus, we're all dispersed and don't have that many shoulders. Uh, here are a few videos where um, I'll just offer some tricks and uh, that's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, I still learn by reading blogs and looking at other things. So um, my way of trying to put a few of these together and really starting with the shell because in the beginning was the command line, as Stevenson said, uh, the shell really is everywhere. You may connect out to uh, an instant in AWS and you have a shell. Or you may have a couple of shell prompts as I have here on the screen. I'll get to that in just a second. And there you have a shell. And um, the first tip really is uh, today about making the shell a little bit richer and that's enabling um, color. And in order to actually show what that was like, I used a facility I had become aware just days ago because I needed to debug something on the particular hardware that this offers. It's a, a virtual, it's a, it's a cloud instance from a university in Brazil that opened, that, that offers PowerPC machines and I had to debug something um, standing as a middleman between Debian and, and R because on PowerPC R was misbehaving, is misbehaving. And um, you know, this service provides a bunch of uh, virtual machines to choose from, instances to start. So I have a CentOS, a Debian, and Ubuntu here, but I was fairly um, I was fairly dismayed because they all already showed color. So I figured I had to go somewhere else. And um, that I then did and can because um, by going to Debian and the container image provided that is old, old stable, i.e. the current release twice removed, we find an instance that oops, um, does not show color. So that's really the way it was in the um, um, very old days. So we're just going to make this a little bit richer real quick. 
waiting for an update. So I'll show this live. I mean, you know, imagine that this was a remote instance that I just booted to or a Docker instance in which I try to, you know, validate a bug report or what have you. Um, so let's just um, install a small apps mistyped. Um, that's what we get for doing this live. Um, So that now gives us an editor. And in this particular case, the color arguments are provided, and you know, I'm familiar with this because I've been running Debian for a really long time, as commented out lines in a resource file for bash. And then it says you can get these things activated by saying, by uncommenting these options. And I did one test a little bit earlier. This is actually no longer the way it works. We have to say that we want dear colors for bash and then I'm commenting these three. And once you've um, modified a resource file like that, you can tell the shell to resource it. And now lo and behold, we have color. Big difference because if I scroll up, uh, that didn't work so well. Well, if we do, um, it without the alias, you see that it doesn't have color. And color really is a big differentiator because we immediately see um, difference between files and directories. Files are white, directories are blue. Executables uh, get um, a different color too. And this one's uh, on inverted color because of the particular modes that it has as the temp directory. So that was really just tip one because I don't want to overwhelm things and spend uh, too much time in a single episode. So um, again, as a recap, um, these settings are often in something called um, bash resource file for bash in the Etsy directory. Sometimes they're also in the Etsy profile. Um, if it's settings that work for different shell types, they can also be, um, and that's what we did in this case, in a local directory bash resource file or sometimes bash uh, profile. And as we did, you can um, um, Activate them often by just uncommenting something. Um, oops. Oh, yeah, right, sorry. There's one that isn't said here, but that I wanted to borrow from the other session. Uh, if, for example, here we look at the bash RC, another one that's. Um, not the bash RC, sorry, the aliases that are in effect, um, that's helpful is turning on grab um, with color mode. So again, if we uh, look at this file and wonder, for example, um, if Alice option is in it, and then we see, yes, it is, but it's not in color. So something that's really handy that didn't used to be enabled um, by default in these distros, but now is, as you can see above, is similar to having enabled color for LS, which actually nowadays also gets done slightly um, differently. We can just say alias grab to grab color equal auto. And here I'm just doing it for grab and not egraph and fgraph. And then let's um, source this again and let's rerun the same command we did a second ago. And now immediately we see the term that we were looking for in a file highlight in a um, very easy to uh, discern color. These things matter, I find. So there were two tips how to turn on color for ls and for grab. And again, you get that in an RC file or if you're lucky. Um, you uh, maybe run something that's recent enough, in this case, even a distro six years old, that it's enabled by default. That's really all that we had for this week. Next week, I'm planning to talk a little bit more about um, command prompts. 
So let's get out of this Docker here. Basically, what you see here, which is a bit more informative, user, machine, directory, handle, and we'll see how to do that. And I should get to that by next Sunday. Otherwise, I just created a uh, repo at GitHub at this address uh, for this series, so T4, tips, tricks, tools, and toys. Um, so if you have suggestions, open an issue ticket there. Um, if you come up with corrections or something that need fixing, something as simple as a typo in my uh, slides or whatever, let me know too. Otherwise, something I also uh, announced, which is a little further off from the simple tips, tips and tricks things, but if you want to learn a little bit more about RCPP, I'll be trying to do this, i.e. talking to the camera, but live streaming rather than taped uh, in a few weeks' time on the day on which I would have uh, provided that very workshop at our finance had we been able to hold our finance and uh, that brings us to the end of today really with these team quick announcements there's a set of usual pointers to slides web page mail github twitter and what have you but if you have something to add for uh the tip sticks tools toys um video lightning talks go to the repo open the ticket there and uh, let me know what you think and that's all that i have for today concludes today's episode thank you